Story time about the girl who left me unconscious in the girl's bathroom. So a little background information. I was pretty young at the time. I was in seventh grade and I was 11 years old. And there was this girl who we're gonna call Jenna. Jenna hated me for absolutely no fucking reason. She would bully me because I had red hair and she would text me literally every day at the same time telling me to off myself and how I was weird and how nobody liked me. One day she randomly started being nice to me. She sat with me at lunch and her water bottle was empty and she asked if I needed mine filled up too. Stupidly, I said yes. Well, she ended up putting drugs in my water bottle. After like 20 minutes, I started feeling sick, so I went to the bathroom and I was kneeling over the toilet when everything went black. Well, when I didn't come back from the bathroom, my teacher got worried. So she sent security looking for me. They were banging on my stall. Obviously, I was fucking unconscious, so I didn't answer. So then they called the fire department, the police, the ambulance were all there. Part two about the girl who left me unconscious in the girl's bathroom. So like I said, the fire department was there, the police, the ambulance. They called the fire department because they couldn't get the door off. And when they removed it, it fell on me. So I was injured and unconscious. And just a little background information on this girl, who, mind you, was a literally 11 years old. She had a three criminal record and was recently in prison for five days or juvie, whatever the heck you want to call it, because she brought a knife to school and tried to stab some kid who had called her fat the day before. Anyways, back to the story. I wake up four days later. My mom's sitting next to me. They put Abby in jail for 13 years for suspicion of attempted murder and she was kicked out of school. And now I'm homeschooled and failing all my classes. I now have seizures because of the drugs that she gave me. So yeah. Am I the asshole for refusing to return the $600 gift I bought my mom for Christmas? To start, I want to mention that unlike my wife, I have a very good relationship with my mom. And because my siblings can always afford pricey gifts for my mom, this year I decided to gift her something nice and expensive for once on Christmas. Though I'm currently unemployed, but I worked for the past few months and my wife and I have a joint account. I already know this is gonna go down. You taking money from the joint account to buy your mom a gift that you cannot afford? Okay, the problem began when my wife found out that I purchased a $600 necklace for my mom to gift her on Christmas using our joint account. She went off on me saying I should have told her and I shouldn't have taken the money from our joint account that she uses to pay the bills and rent, especially now that we're struggling. Dumbass, like what? I asked why should I tell her since it's for both of us, but she reminded me that despite that being true, one, I no longer work, and two, 600 is a lot, and I should have consulted her, but the reasons I didn't are, one, I feel that it's my money too, and I can make purchases using our joint account, and two, I know if I told my wife, she refused to let me buy the gift solely because she hates my mom. She yelled at me saying that it is her hard-earned money I threw away and needed to return the necklace, but I refused because mom already knows about it. She responded that this is no longer our joint account since I no longer earn money and that if I want to give mom expensive items, then need to earn money myself. She insisted I return it, but I said no and it escalated to me calling her bitter and controlling after she pointed out I never got her anything in this price range. She's insisting I return it and at least get a cheaper one, but I'm done being the one with the least expensive slash valuable gifts to gift in the family. She's making this her hill to die on. So, am I the asshole? Yes, you dumb piece of shit. What is wrong with you? This looks like he has a problem with himself because everyone else can afford getting their mom nice gifts and he feels like he's at the bottom of the totem pole because he can't do that. That sounds like a you problem. Go get a job. You think I would want a gift from someone who doesn't have a job and I see like, oh shit, my son is jobless and he bought me a $600 necklace. I don't want that. Go pay your bills. You have a wife, you have family. As a mom would not want her kid to spend that kind of money that they don't have. Am I the asshole for telling my wife she embarrassed me by bringing a meal to my work? I, 33 male, recently got hired at a large company in the South where me and my wife moved months ago. My wife was excited for my new job and talked about preparing a surprise for me, which got me excited, but I didn't know what it was till she showed up at my workplace two days ago with a meal she said she prepared specifically for me since it's my favorite. Apparently, this was her surprise. I was a little upset she brought it to my workplace. My coworkers, who are vicious and brutally honest, and sarcastic got involved and kept teasing me about the meal one of them joked about how mommy is so supportive by bringing food to my workplace i felt like shit as he and other co-workers kept laughing at me i went to work the next day and austin kept making jokes about me saying shit like is mommy going to bring lunch today as well and when is mommy coming to change your diaper is this fucking middle school one of them said i can still smell the meal my name's mom brought yesterday she's such a great cook bless her 
heart and the goddamn giggles kept on. I felt so awful. I went home and just blew up at my wife telling her she flat out fucking embarrassed me and just torpedoed any goddamn prestige and respect I had among my coworkers. I told her what Austin and others have been doing and asked if she was happy for giving them ammo to come at me like that. She argued that she was just trying to do something nice for me and didn't care about what people might say. But I was a selfish jerk who only cares about what others think rather than how she felt by my constant berating over a meal she put effort, money, and time to make and bring me. The argument escalated after I suggested that she could have waited till I got home to surprise me with this goddamn meal instead of showing up while I was working, which made me seem unprofessional. She said she came during lunch break. She said at this point, I clearly find it easier to blame her than stand up for myself. I said I don't appreciate what she said, but she replied that I should be grateful she cared enough to bring me a home-cooked meal, then thanked me for showing her it's not worth wasting any more of her time cooking for me after this. I told her to stop blaming me for something she caused and asked her to admit that maybe she should have consulted me before bringing the meal over so I could avoid being the goddamn butt of every joke. She told me to man up and either report them or quit then. I was floored and I had to walk out because I couldn't take any more and felt like she wasn't listening to how her behavior caused me an issue at work. But it goes edit to say that I in no way don't appreciate my wife's efforts. So the only problem I have is that she didn't tell me beforehand about whether it was okay to bring the meal over to my workplace. I really preferred that she waited till I got home. I agree that the main problem I have is my coworkers, but I lashed out because I felt overwhelmed with their hurtful remarks that offended my wife as well. He doesn't appreciate it. He can say it, but he doesn't. Couples therapy or call it quits. Ugh, I wish we had a wife right in. Story time about when I stuffed my face with edibles before dinner with my wife's parents. Recently, I traveled to Denver, Colorado with my wife and her parents. As a resident of a non-legalized state and as someone who is too much of a pussy to regularly buy illegal drugs, the thing I was looking forward to most was the chance to buy fancy legal tree. What could possibly go wrong? So the first thing I do upon arriving after successfully ditching the in-laws is drag my wife to a nearby dispensary for a shopping spree. And oh my god, it was just like in my dreams. Tons of different options in neat little sample jars and a team of helpful stoners walking me through the various strains. Are you looking for a mellow body high? Or do you want something that gives you a bit more pep and energy? Or are you just hoping for something light to take the stress off? Yes, yes, and yes, I replied eagerly, like a fat kid in a candy store, and request an eighth ounce of about seven different options. In hindsight, if I learned anything from this experience, it is that my math and science teachers never taught me basic information, like what's an ounce, or how much tree can a person consume in a single weekend. Sure, I can tell you when two speeding trains leaving separate stations will collide or recite Avogadro's number, but it turns out that none of that information is particularly relevant in getting high in a responsible and efficient manner. At this dispensary, I also learned that you can't actually smoke in public places, including the hotel that my wife and I were staying at. As a result, before leaving, I begged my wife to buy some edibles that I could munch on until we found a place to properly get lit. After expressing shock as to the absurd volume of drugs that we were buying, unlike me, she is the product of private school and understands the imperial measurement system. She relents and we walk out of the store with what felt like a dump truck of weed plus a small package of seemingly innocuous ginger snap cookies. When we finally get back to the hotel room, I tear those bad boys open, only to find about a dozen tiny cookies roughly the size of a quarter. What the F Denver? Seeing the skepticism and hunger in my eyes, my wife warns me that I should go easy and look at the back of the package first before trying one. Dough size one half of a cookie. I read silently as I start taking microbites from the edges like a giant chinchilla gnawing on a sunflower seed. But what kind of a savage only eats half of a cookie? So a second later, I covertly pop the remainder into my mouth. And then I quickly stuff another two cookies in my mouth for good measure the minute my wife turns her back. We may not have legal tree back home, but I routinely devour an entire package of Milano's in one sitting without breaking a sweat. Your move, tiny ginger snaps. About 30 minutes later, we're in the backseat of a parent's rental car on the way to dinner. And that's when things start to go tits up. My stomach growls loudly and angrily. My wife looks at me with inquisitive eyes that seem to say diarrhea, but I merely clutch my tummy and mumble something about altitude sickness. You didn't eat the whole cookie, did you? She asks, 10% in genuine concern and 90% seething in irritation. Of course not, I respond, avoiding eye contact for the remainder of the car ride. A few minutes later, we're climbing out of her parents' rental car and heading into some trendy farm table restaurant. I don't remember how I made it to my seat and I don't remember even looking at the menu, but I do remember the concerned look on the waiter's face as he asked me if I was doing all right. Keep it together, man, I say to myself. My wife's sudden groan suggests that I may have also said that to the waiter. Things are going downhill fast. The waiter nods sympathetically, takes our orders, and then heads to the next table. The moment he walks away, my wife is staring daggers at me. I start to worry that the jig is up. You are sweating from your entire face. She says both with pity and disgust. Not quite knowing what to do, I reach for my napkin and proceed to blot my cheeks, nose, neck, chin, and forehead. Things only go downhill from here when my wife's mom looks at me with concern and asks if I'm alright. Am I the asshole for putting over a hundred cockroaches in my parents' bed? I'm 16 female, so I live with my parents. I started having asthma symptoms a couple years ago, but only when I was trying to sleep. I would literally be unable to breathe. I've been to all sorts of specialists and put on all types of medications because all they could do was tell me it must be an allergy. 
Around that same time, I began seeing an occasional cockroach in my room and I would squish it and throw it out. Then the air from my vents started smelling musty. I would see more and more cockroaches. I told my parents of this and they're convinced there's not a cockroach problem. I've been seeing almost 15 to 20 in my room any time of the night or day every day for months. Am I the asshole for putting over 100 cockroaches in my parents' bed? I've done some research and supposedly cockroaches can cause respiratory problems. But my parents refuse to call a bug exterminator person. I'm tired of living with them and can hear them crawling in the walls. They're in my bed, I feel them crawl on me when I'm trying to sleep, and no, I don't eat in my room. I started taking a photo of everyone I killed and sending the picture to my parents. 15 to 20 pictures a day. They're pissed and insist that I'm sending the same photo over and over and threaten grounding me. Instead, I've been putting the dead ones in bags. 118 of them over 7 days. I then dumped all the bags.